Thanks for joining me for another uh, week of Tips and Tricks Tuesday. Um, today I'm going to have a special guest, Dan Erickson. Uh, he's going to be kind of talking about insight. He'll introduce himself and then we'll jump into a video. So uh, let's go ahead and introduce you to Dan Erickson. Hey, I'm Dan Erickson, and here's a little preview of my advanced software training class. Next, we're going to take a look at this component from the tray scraping fixture assembly that we saw earlier. This is one of the hinges. Now, specifically, let's talk orientation with this part. Now, in the default orientation that it comes in at, if we slice this, remembering what we talked about earlier uh, with respect to the strength of layer uh, adhesion, as compared to the strength across layers. Uh, consider that this part is going to be uh, loaded through these holes and pulled apart from each other. So that means that we're going to have a tensile strain across these layer lines. So if this is going to break anywhere, it's going to break right here at the area where its cross section is the smallest. So this is probably not a good orientation for this part. So let's think about laying it down flat. Okay, now in this orientation, uh, we have a similar issue. Um, the shear being pulled on these pins is pulling across the layer lines, true, but because of the shape of the pin, it would f tend to force these layers apart. So again, if this part is going to break when printed in this orientation, it's going to break here, and that happens to be an area with pretty low cross-sectional area. Uh, the other thing is, in either of those orientations, these holes will require support, or they'll need to be drilled out if they're going to be uh, fit properly for pins. So uh, although it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, the best orientation for this part is like this. But that brings its own challenges. If we take a look at the default supports, this is smart supports, we can see that first of all there's a lot of support material here. Uh, almost every single layer will involve a transition from model material to support material and that's going to add some build time like we talked about earlier. Uh, but because of the way that the support wraps around the part, and this is going to be really hard to remove by hand, so this part's going to have to go in the tank. Uh, but more importantly, the support structure doesn't add much in the way of stability, or really at all. So as this part's being printed, it, uh, it may wobble around a little bit, and that's going to affect the surface finish. Or, worst case, it could cause the part to tip over and fail. So, what we're going to take a look at in this lesson is how to go from this to this. So what we've done here is we've optimized the support structure so that it's easy to remove by hand. We've added stabilized walls to contact the part as the part is growing to add stability, keep the part from moving around as it's printing. And by using custom groups, uh, we can apply material only where it's required and optimize for the way that the part is going to be loaded. All right, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, just so you know, we do offer insight training, advanced insight training. Uh, you can visit our website uh, to book uh, your training. Uh, Dan Erickson is a great instructor. I went through that class. It helped me out a lot. Uh, so hopefully you guys want to take advantage of that. Uh, reach out to me or, or again, go to CATI.com and you can uh, find the training there. Thanks.